So one of my roles at Crest is to investigate um, near misses um, and adverse incidents concerning the products that we um, manufacture as their medical devices, they're class one medical devices. And with any medical device, we have to put an intended use down on paper somewhere and in the user manual. And um, that's we're declaring the equipment to be safe in X, Y, and Z environments and circumstances. It's always a challenge because the K Walker, for example, which can, from its conception was a gait training device and something to be used in a gym, um, soon became popular as a community walker and now is widely used by children everywhere as a daily living aid. And over the last 10 years in particular, I've seen children push the envelope in terms of how and where they use them. I remember a copy of the Sunday Telegraph or something like that, that, that had a picture of a child, Somerset House in London on the ice with their K Walker. Not in their intended use, I hasten to say, but at the same time raises a smile. And I've seen greater take up of football in all its forms with children using the K Walker. And it led me to think some years back, in what way could we actually improve that situation for the child to make maybe the product more resilient to knocks, um, but also make playing football easier. And I wasn't the only person that was observing this. People were observing this in the, in the disability sports world. And we, we happened to get our heads together and, and share our experiences. And this gave birth to the game frame. The game frame is uh, not a medical device, although we, in terms of our vigilance, in terms of our safeguarding, we, we handle it just the, in the same way as a medical device. But it's not a medical device in that it's not used every day. It's used in a fairly controlled environment. We worked with a couple of universities, actually, and with those universities, we arrived at some things that we'd like to, to change about it. And one of the things was making access to the ball a lot easier, kicking the ball a lot easier but also with children playing in a frame, we wanted to avoid, and this is a football parlance, um, dead ball situations. So we wanted to avoid throw-ins, we wanted to avoid um, collisions wherever we could. So we wanted a frame that if the ball was missed for, by a child, for example, the ball would be able to roll through the frame so the ball isn't trapped in, in the frame. And we started working with partners like Cerebral Palsy Sport, uh, the International Federation for CP Football, together with universities, together with um, some football clubs, not just with the design of the frame, but then other things that design the frame with things like what the game rules that are gonna be. So deciding on the type of football, for example, was important didn't want a ball that bounced particularly high, and we needed to get the size of the football right. All that work has gone into creating a frame which is now used for frame football, which is a growing sport internationally, has its rules ratified, takes into consideration, you know, children with CP, they can tire easily, possibly prone to sort of fractures, so things like playing on uneven grass is not really, is not, it's not really an environment where you can play it, hence it, the, the game is played in a, a gym. So all of these inputs from players, clubs, uh, disability sports organisations, all kind of led into the design of the frame. And it's a design that's evolving, and it's also a design which we have now um, a dialogue in the volleyball arena and in the rugby arena in terms of exploring how we can adapt a game frame to be well to be optimized for playing those other sports not just football we're seeing children and parents are seeing their children get out of breath probably for the first time um, perspiring a lot more getting ruddy red cheeks and just being able to enjoy the sports that they they've maybe felt a little bit on the sideline with and now they're kind of fully active and involved with so the growth of the sport is not just dependent on having equipment that can be used and that is optimised for whatever the sport is. The infrastructure has to be there and it's, um, it's early days, it's growing. A lot of the clubs are parent powered. Some of the opportunities are coming through uh, UK Athletics, some of them are coming through the FA, but there's still a long way to go. So it's difficult to signpost families, but what I want to say is it's coming and find out more and keep informed and, uh, and, and watch this space really.